Good morning and welcome to the week ahead video with me, David Madden. Today's date is Friday the 3rd of January 2020 and the time has just gone 11.20 GMT. And I'm looking ahead to next week, which is Monday the 6th until Friday the 10th of January. Uh, before we talk about the big, the big events of next week, uh, we, let's first talk about uh, the events of the last few days, so the, the first few days of the new trading year. Uh, so we had a big sell-off uh, in European uh, equity markets uh, this morning. We're also seeing pointing a lower start for the US markets as well. On the back of the news from overnight uh, that uh, airstrikes uh, carried out by the United States have, uh, have assassinated and killed uh, a senior um, Iranian military officer in Iraq. Now this has really uh, upset the apple cart in terms of tensions in, in the Middle East. We've seen the price of oil shoot higher. We've seen global equities uh, fall on the back of it. Uh, the likes of the, the old classics, uh, things like the quality plays such as gold is doing well, as is the Japanese yen. So traders are clearly very decisively uh, in risk off mode. But this comes first of all out of the blue, but second of all, on the back of a fairly positive start to the year 2020. Um, yesterday was the first trading day of the new of the new trading year and also the trading decade. Uh, and what we saw was we saw a decent move higher in, Euro in uh, Asian, European and US markets. And that was driven by the, op the continued optimism in relation to US China, but also we've heard from the China Central Bank who stated that early next week they're going to lower the reserve requirement ratio. And this is probably not going to be a massive um, impact on lending in China, but, it's just, but it shows the Chinese authorities are there to assist the economy. So um, the news in the last, uh, in, say, last 12 hours or 18 hours about the US airstrikes in Iraq has really given traders an excuse to actually get out, uh, get out of equities. Uh, they were coming from a fairly lofty kind of position to, to begin with. Um, and now we're seeing very much cash being, being funneled out of stocks and into the Japanese yen, gold, and also oil. It's also had a major move to the upside. Just over fears that there's going to be some sort of retaliation from Iran, where that may or may not happen. That could lead to um, the, the disruption in the kind of global energy market or logistics in that part of the world. Uh, so we have seen a major move to the upside in the oil market. Now, what I'll, what I'll do is uh, I'll take a quick look at uh, how markets have been faring, the major uh, major global stock markets, take a look at the pound as well, and then I'll run through the uh, the big events of next week. So as we can see here, taking the wider view, we've seen a decent move to the upside in the FTSE 200 between uh, early October running into the end of last year. Uh, at the back end of December, we saw the FTSE 100 hit a level last seen uh, since July, so it's in a fairly bullish, bullish run. Uh, but we have seen a bit of a move to the downside in, uh, today in light of what's going on uh, with Iran. So in the near term, if we do see any further downward pressure, we might head back to this zone here, 7,470, or perhaps even down to kind of 7,400. But you know, we, we really would need to see a major kind of um, rift between the US and, uh, and, and Iran before we have you know we have a prolonged and sustained sell-off. And this could potentially be something that kind of lasts for a number of days. And should that be the case, we might see the wider upward trend continue because it's been in place for some time now. And should we see a scenario where, where the market um, calms, calms down and we see the market pushing higher, we could be looking at retesting uh, the late July high you know, just north of 7,730. And should we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting this zone here in around 7,000, just shy of 7,800. Uh, but if we do have a fairly sizable move to the downside, we could see the uh, the market head back down towards this red line here, the Trinity moving average, and that comes to play at 73.45. I take a look at what's going over on, over in Germany. You know, keep in mind uh, in mid December, in December, we saw the German market hit a 23 month high. So the stocks, uh, the German market was in a very lofty position. We've seen quite an aggressive move to the downside today, um, which is and this candle here look, looks to be very much uh, very much a very very bearish candle we could be looking at a, a clear bearish engulfing here um, but keep in mind despite the fact we've had an, a quite a large sell-off we still managed to hold above this blue line here the 50 moving average and that comes to play at 13,140 so if you could hold above that there's a possibility that the wider upper trend, upper trend might be sustained and should that be the case and if you look to retest the recent highs 
and then go beyond that. We could be look, potentially looking at heading up towards this area here at 13,600. But if you do, if contentions between the US and, and Iran continue to kind of run along, we could see further pressure take us back below the 50 moving average. And should that be the case, we could head down towards the kind of psychologically potent 13,000 mark. And if, if, if we uh, go below that, we could head back down toward this area here in around 12,900. I'll take a look at what's going on with the S&P 500. You know, keep in mind, we had the S&P 500 yesterday at yet another all-time high. And today's candle is quite bearish. We could be looking at a bearing engulfing here, depending on how, how things finish up on, on today's trading session. Um, so if we do manage to get a press on lower from here in the near term, we could be looking heading back down towards 3,200. That's a big, you know, big uh, psychological number. And if we go below that, we could be looking heading back down towards this zone here in around 3,180. Uh, but you know, like I said, the wider trend has been to the upside. So should we kind of retest, should we retake the recent high in around 3,261? We could then be looking at, um, you know, continuing on the kind of wider upper trend of 2,270, uh, 80, 90, so on and so forth. I'll also take a look at what's going on at the, at the British pound. We've had a, seen a rebound in the US dollar in the last couple, in the last couple of days. Keep in mind, at the back end of 20, uh, back end of December, um, we, the dollar index was basically at a five month low. So we've seen a bit of a rebound in the US dollar. And with that, we've seen downward pressure in the British pound. So starting to a, a terrific, a terrific run between September in through December. Um, but then since then, we have obviously had a fairly sizable correction. Traders were, were happy to lock in some profits that were made on the British pound versus the US dollar. We can see here that there, thereabouts, and the managed to kind of market held above the kind of 129, traded a bit below the 50 moving average, but we're still above that metric. Now, I know we've seen we've had a couple of negative days, but this could potentially just be a short term uh, pullback given that we've had a rally in, in late December. So, if the kind of wider upper trend does continue, and we take out the recent high in at 131 spot 32.84, we could then be looking at heading up towards the kind of 135 zone. Uh, it's only really if you're going to take out again, this zone here of the 50 moving average, which comes to play at 1 spot 29.84 down to 1 spot 29. It's only really if you're going to have a, a size break below 129, could then we begin to get worried. And should that be the case, we could be looking at it back down toward this red line here, which is the 30 moving average, and that comes to play in at 1 spot 26.90. Now, in terms of the bigger events to keep eye out for next week, um, Early, already on next week, we have the um, the final reading of Flash Services PMI from Spain, Italy, France, Germany, the UK, and the US. Um, on Tuesday, uh, early next sorry, next, early next week on the seventh, we have the the um, the Eurozone CPI reading. That's going to be a close a closely watch, seeing as uh, demand in the Eurozone has been fairly weak recently. Any sign of things picking up uh, will be welcomed by the ECB. Uh, uh, we have first quarter figures from Walgreens Boots Alliance on, fri on Friday, uh, the, um, which is the 10th. We have the all-important U.S. non-farm payrolls figures. Uh, keep in mind, last month's numbers was a very impressive report. The unemployment rate fell back to a 50-year low. The headline figure comfortably topped expectations, and earnings were decent. I'm we're, so we're respecting a fairly good numbers uh, from this report as well. Respecting the headline figure to be a, a sum in the region of 166,000. The unemployment rate is tipped the whole steady at 3.5%, and wages are expected to be 3.1%. So keep an eye out for non farm payrolls report. Uh, speaking of which, it is worth remembering, noting uh, my colleague Michael Houston will be holding a live webinar event uh, next week for non farm payrolls. If you go to Insights and go to web, uh, Webinars and Events, you'll find that this uh, the sign-up page right here. That begins at 13.15 GMT next week. And lastly, next week, we also have the Canadian jobs report. So keep an eye for what's going on over in Canada too, because Canadian numbers often get overlooked uh, by, the, uh, by, by the US numbers. Well, that's all from me this week. Thank you very much.